apples. I know that's a, especially in the fall when people are making apple pies, what the the best type of apples to use in pies. Do you have any recommendation? Well, you live in uh, the Big Apple area. <laughs> so uh, I would defer to you first of what your favorites are for apple pie. Oh, okay. So I would say um, for those of us who are in New England, that Northern Spy tends to be the, the big pie apple. I actually like a combination of apples in mine because I like the different textures and I like the different flavors. So I try to pair some kind of tartar, drier apples, if you will, with kind of sweeter, juicier apples. Um, and so you get that kind of play on texture. My mom always used to put one pear in her apple pie and I liked that little, like something was different. You couldn't really tell, but when I think of, of apples to use, I try and think of, you know, how does this cook up? Does it get really soft? Does it keep its texture? Things like Granny Smith tend to stay very firm and they don't produce a lot of juice. And then you have um, kind of Macintosh and, and Rome and softer apples that, um, that really soften up, don't hold their shape as well, but they give a lot of nice texture to a pie. That combination of kind of sweet, tart, soft, kind of semi-firm as things bake up. So you get all of those different different flavors and textures. I agree with you 100%. When I'm mixing together apples or choosing apples for a pie, I want some for sweet, some for tart, some that hold their shape, some that don't. So yeah. that I have not only a flavor text, a flavor sensation, but I have a textural sensation in my mouth yeah. also. Along with your idea of putting the pear in, which I do too sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Try a diced up quince in there also. Oh, yes. It's, it's just like you go, whoa, what is that? You know, that little bit of, whoa, you know, yeah. that's really good. There's always that question too, that uh, the space between the top crust and the filling. When it, the mile know, high apple pie that then became. And it has the Grand Canyon underneath. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And that's, you know, that is the nature of apples. It's their properties that they, they shrink. And there are some workarounds. There are some tricks. Use apples that are softer. If it's too, too high and the apples are uh, smushing down there and they're shrinking down, just try using uh, less amount instead of chunking them, layering them. And um, another uh, trick that you can do is to put all of your filling, uh, mixed filling, your fruit sweetener, seasoning, and thickener, mix it up, put it into a braising pan and start to pre-cook that down. And then you can let it cool completely. And then it's already done most of its slumping. Yeah. And then put it into the, the cooled filling. And I want to emphasize the cooled filling because you never want to put a hot filling into a nice, chilly, cold crust <laughs> and have your fat melt. And then you exactly. have this, you know, you have this, this gummy bottom. Gummy bottom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Searching for the word. And I've also taken a partially pre-cooked apple filling, let it cool, and then frozen it. Uh, it's really wonderful if you have you know, special apples that you can only get in the fall. And then you pull out these fillings that are already done. And somebody says, where did you get these apples? And you just kind of like, oh, I have my spores. <laughs> it's my freezer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, when you're looking for that mild high apple pie, um, that layering, so kind of slicing thin and, and making sure there's not a, a lot of space in between them. So as they do cook down, it's not collapsing all of that space um, and kind of keeping everything in there. And um, thinking about how the apple cooks down, you know, again, is it like a Granny Smith where it softens but holds its shape? Or is it something like a Rome that tends to lose that shape and gets much softer that you know, you'll see a difference in between those. And I think that's the value of using a number of different apples or variety apples in your, in your pie. You have all that, that balance of, of texture and flavor, and you don't have apples that are really cooking down, but the other ones are still holding their shape there. I just go to the store and I buy one or two of everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the farmer's market, that's my favorite is to go. And tasting, you know. And, yes. and I uh, basically, when I'm making pies, uh, depending upon the sweetness of the fruit dictates how much sugar I'm going to put in. So, you know, for me in a filling, the most important ingredient is pie worthy fruit, which has yeah. to have flavor. Yeah. And I think, you know, tasting the apples, if you like to eat it out of hand, you're really going to love it in your pie. Do you peel your apples? So I tend to, um, just a texture thing for me, but I have heard through the grapevine that maybe you don't. I don't peel most of my apples. There are several that I do peel. So Granny Smith's, 
as you mentioned, they have a thicker skin. Uh, so I do peel a Granny Smith and the new um, Cosmic Crisps that came out that are so deliciously sweet. They're just yeah. wonderful. Um, they have a thicker skin also. Pears, I feel like, you know, sometimes the Bosque, I think, can have a little bit of a rougher skin, but for Danju and, and Bartlett's, I usually feel if they're ripe enough that, that you don't even notice that it's there. Mm-hmm.